This program is brought to you by Emory University. Many sculptures are displayed throughout Emory University's campus. Several of these sculptures were acquired as a part of the Chairs exhibit at Emory in 2003. Others were site-specific commissions and some were donated to the university. These sculptures are overseen by the university's Public Art Committee, a volunteer group of faculty and staff members that is dedicated to incorporating public art into Emory's campus. These works of art not only enhance the beauty of the campus, but they also play an integral role in campus life. Some of the chairs are in busy areas, and it is not unusual to see students lounging on them. Other sculptures are symbolic of Emory, such as our school's unofficial mascot, Dooley, and are regularly decorated to advertise events or promote school spirit. Because these statues are installed outdoors and in public places, they are exposed to weather changes and the campus community is able to interact directly with them daily. As a result of this exposure and access, changes and damage can occur. In order to track the changes to the sculptures and plan for their future maintenance, the condition of each sculpture is assessed annually. In 2008, the university hired freelance objects conservator Catherine Singley to develop a survey and systematically inspect each of Emory's sculptures. Every year, Student interns review the sculpture's conditions, and we compare our observations with the original survey documents. We consult with the conservators at the Carlos Museum to establish priorities for the sculpture's immediate treatment and long-term care. We then share these priorities with the university's public art committee. We fill out a report form detailing the changes we see and take photographs of any new damage or other changes, such as flaking paint, weathered surfaces, corrosion, accumulated dirt, or spider webs. We rate the severity of the damage and indicate the changes we have recorded on an outline drawing of the sculpture. We have examined around 20 sculptures this semester. One notable example is The Wave by James Clover, located in front of Atwood Hall Chemistry Building. It is made of welded sheets of an iron alloy and the entire surface is painted. The Wave was constructed in 1974 and later installed at Emory. The biggest issue with this sculpture is cracking and flaking paint. Because the sculpture is outdoors, the paint has been exposed to a lot of sunlight and seasonal weather conditions. So, the paint is fading and peeling off the surface, especially at the edges. As a result, the metal underneath is exposed and is now corroding. If the damage to the wave is left untreated, further damage will occur. The corrosion will pop off more of the paint, exposing more metal to corrosion and eventually causing holes and cracks to form. It may be necessary to strip and repaint the sculpture with input from the artist or his studio. After 30 years, changes in the surrounding stream bed made it necessary to modify the 1979 installation source route. This sculpture consists of a pair of sloping pathways in wood and steel that lead visitors into a ravine in Baker Woods. In April 2011, sculptor George Trakis returned to campus to construct a new stair and replace damaged boards. For large conservation efforts like this, input from the artist can be very important. The artist knows the original materials used for the sculpture as well as its intended appearance. Artists often have opinions about changes to the original appearance whether due to aging, weathering, or use. Some artists consciously incorporate the aging process into their work, and others want their sculptures to appear as when first made. We want to respect their ideas about what their sculptures should look like. In order to learn the artist's opinions about their sculpture, we send questionnaires to the artist asking about the materials used in the sculpture as well as their original appearance. We also asked about acceptable changes in appearance and preferences for intervention or care. We received responses from over half of the artists 
whose sculptures are on campus. The artists were really appreciative of Emmer's consideration of their sculptures and respect for their artistic intentions. Atlanta artist and Georgia State University faculty member George Beasley visited campus to discuss his director's chair, currently installed on a wooded slope behind the Woodruff Library. Mr. Beasley discussed his materials and fabrication methods, as well as his desires for the sculpture's appearance. We also discussed his requirements for the placement of the sculpture, learning that it should ideally be located near water. Because this campus is constantly evolving, it may become necessary to relocate sculptures and the artist's parameters for placement should be considered when choosing a new site. Consulting with conservators at the Carlos Museum, students have also participated in projects to clean and maintain the campus sculptures. The Yoder chairs were polished and waxed. George Charka's source root was cleaned and some portions replaced with help from the artist himself. The Farlow Bench, Nona's Chairs, and Lewis Tower No. 1 were watched by a team of campus volunteers. Contacting the artists and surveying the sculptures helped to ensure that the public art on Emory's campus receives proper care, attention, and treatment. We hope to develop a long-term plan for maintenance specific to each sculpture. We hope that our efforts will promote the future care and continued support for Emory's public art. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.